so this is pretty much like the the final product of the of the sort of breathing demo and i'll just kind of show how i did it from from scratch usually for cycles like this i'll leave it more for literally cycles like if a character is just standing in the background and breathing let's delete everything you know let's say he uh is just standing here breathing and i'll obviously do like a little bit of a heavier breathing it's going to be a lot of chest up and down and then a lot of the changes also end up just being from like the character design sort of like limitations what happens when you're kind of using this guy is you can see the head is is sort of moving a lot already so the orient to placement helps with rotation but it doesn't really help with the translation but Usually that's what I'll start with to get just the the baseline of like what the breathing is that I want. So as I said, we're going to do fairly fast sort of breathing. So let's do like half a second. So on this frame, it's kind of going to go up and back a little. And on this frame, this is sort of like the neutral. We could push it a little bit, just push it down and right. And then I just flip back and forth between them. And I'm like, okay, this is sort of like the breathing. To me, it already feels like someone who just finished like running or something, right? Like they're not relaxed. So then I'll just copy it to the next key. And I've already got the cycles going. And I want to get this locked down before I'm like adding anything else, because this is the core of my of my movement. Like everything else is going to be pretty much based on this, because that's where the action is driving from. So I'm going to refine this motion to is what I want it to be, whether with tangents or with keys. So I can just hit weighted tangents on everything, grab everything, and just pull it out a little bit just to start, just to get a little bit more favoring, basically. So I'm spending less time on those in-betweens and more on the keyframes and or ease it in these out, however you want to call it. So that already feels better, you know, just as like sort of a starting point. Just spend a little bit more time on the breathe in and then have the breathe out be a little bit faster, right? So you could do like this, just offsetting. But as you can see with the tangents, everything's sort of like messed up. So now I'm going to go back to just doing this with keys because I prefer it this way. So I'm going to add those ease ins and ease outs manually. And you could even like fast out with the breathe out. So you see like there's different feels to it versus something like this. But now it suddenly feels like everything's like hitting a wall a little bit. So maybe this needs a little bit more time. So I'm going to just reduce that a little bit. Like maybe, yeah, I think that feels a little bit better. All right. So the next thing that I like to do sometimes is alter the translation versus the rotation. I like it to feel like either it rotates first and then translates or uh, translates and then rotates. And I could do that simply by just like offsetting the translate Y. So let's say I want the translate Y to be first. So now you can feel like there's a little bit of this, right? And if I push it even more, you can see it even more, but to me, that's too much. It's too like wavy. So let's try two frames. I don't even like two frames. I'm just going to do one frame, just a little bit versus I could have the translate later. And that's sort of like what it feels like. So just go with what feels right to you, right? Like in the moment, it's it's going to be very dependent on a lot of things. I'm generally sort of happy with this. I'm not too worried about like the extra sort of like Y and Z. I can offset them as well in time to get a little bit of variation, a little bit of arc if I want. But I you can do that after as well, you know, and keep adjusting. So the next thing I'm going to do is the shoulders, because again, it's pretty much like the closest thing to that. And what you can do in copy curves, let's take the translate X because it's not offset in time. So it'll be easier to copy and then grab the two shoulder controls and just paste. This will paste everything, right? So I don't need the translate X. Actually, let's just remove the, the translates, right? So now copying it, I pretty much have the same sort of motion on the shoulders. X in this case is sort of like the up and down. Y is the back and forward, and then Z is never really sure what that is. I mean, our shoulder can rotate in many different ways, but I find there's always one rotation on the shoulder that I just use to mainly make sure it doesn't look broken. So the shoulders, what I like to do is make sure that they're arcing. So I will offset 
the rotation Y from the X. So now it's getting a little bit of rolling. If I offset it by two frames, it'll roll even more, which actually feels decent. So I'm going to do that. And then again, decide like, do I want the shoulders to lead or do I want them to just be after the chest, right? And now suddenly the rolling feels way too off. So I'm gonna reduce it, right? And again, this is very heavy breathing and I could probably play with the spacing as well. So maybe the shoulders like are offset but they don't take as much time to reach their final position because they're smaller than the chest, right? And then maybe to come down, they they're much, much sharper, right? Because they're smaller, right? So they would move a little bit faster. So what you can do to expand the chest is just translate the shoulders out because as the person's breathing, their chest expands. And one of the ways to make it feel like it expands is by taking the shoulders and pulling them out. Again, very dependent on like the character design. So I'm just going to take the rotation X and copy it and go to, I think it's, I think it's Z and just sort of copy that curve, um, scale it down and probably I'll have to flip it between each one is going to be different. So this one I'll have to flip the other way, right? So now you're getting that chest expansion and again, it's way too much, but so maybe I want the chest expansion to be leading right maybe i want it to be two frames so it kind of feels like like that right i feel like one frame was probably enough so let's just do one frame and then i don't actually want the the chest expansion to to lead on the way out so maybe i'll bring that forward yeah i think that's fine so once that's kind of done the rest of it is is sort of just to either support it or to make sure that it's not moving too much. Like to me, the neck and the head are moving way, way too much. So let's start with the arms. So this is where you can kind of use those, those aim space tricks or again, or a hand key it. Or you could use world space if you're in IK arms as well. But if I were to key it, I would basically try to get the, the arms to sort of like drag behind. And then as they come up, they'll drag behind, right? So I'm getting this, right? This is like the exaggerated. Oh, I didn't uh, cycle this, there we go. Right, and this is way too much. So got to tone it down. Still way, way too much. Right. And so this is where I probably would use like aim space or something. So, so let's do five and minus Y. There it is over there. So now I've kind of got this guy controlling it. And then I can just sort of take all the curves and scale them down. Right. Doesn't look great, but as a starting point, right. It's sort of getting stuck as well. I don't think it's looping very nicely. Yeah. So something with the loop went wrong. So I'm just going to do it from tw frame 25. And that loop is a little bit better. There we go. And then I could do the same with, with the elbow. And I could probably just offset this in time. Let's do one more frame. So you get a little bit of sort of that offset and then I could copy it to, to the other side. And then you can do the same for the, for the wrists and, and so on and so forth. So let's just copy this onto the other side. So now they're sort of doing the same thing. And then I can you know, offset everything in time. So they're not doing the exact same thing at the same time. Maybe just change the curves a little bit. Maybe I'll add a little bit on the COG. So again, I can take the translate Y, uh, copy, paste it. Let's paste it on it. everything. Let's see if that will work. Yeah, that'll work. Um, and then I can just, again, offset things in time. 
Uh, I don't actually want the translate y to an x to be offset like this, but because you probably want this to be more like that. So it's like a little bit more shifting side to side rather than always going up and down. Maybe it needs to be a little bit more. The same for the translate z, it probably needs to be scaled a lot more and toned down a lot more. So now you're getting a little bit of those arcs, but to me, it's it's way, way, way too much. So I'm just going to take everything and scale it down. And then for the head, I like to use the, the world space because I like to translate it. But let's get a little bit of rotation. Let's do plus Z. All right, so now I'm just getting a little bit of overlap on the head, but it's not like crazy. Let's fake this out. Just make sure the first and the last key are the same because they are not. I'm just gonna do like frame 50 and just make sure they're the same. That's it, really. Whatever you don't like as much, you can just tone down head, body, arms. Right, so now he's a little bit more calm, still pretty intense breathing, but so yeah.